and welcome to Bang Goes the Theory. Now, you might have noticed we're not in Bang HQ right now. No, we're in the messy workshop where I spend half my life. We are indeed. The reason why we're here is because we need Gem's workshop in all its glory to explain some of the science behind what's been going on these past few days. How is it that a volcano with an almost unpronounceable name... Oh, go on, give it a go. Go it on. looks like egg falafel written down. <laughs> That's awful. It's actually a bit more like I have a low good. How is it that I have good <laughs> has managed to ground almost all the planes in Western Europe? Well, we're going to attempt to answer that question for you tonight. And first up, Dallas has headed off to Cranfield University to hang out with a bunch of scientists who seem to be the only people up in the air right now. I'm here at Cranfield in Bedfordshire at the airfield here with the Natural Environment Research Council and this is literally one of the only planes that's going to be flying in Britain today. This plane's actually going up near the ash cloud to take atmospheric samples to give us an idea about what we're up against. In the days since the eruption, this Dormier 228 aircraft has been specially modified by a team of scientists from all over the UK. What okay. we've done is we've put the pylons on the wings so yeah. we can run these additional instruments. Yeah. What we've done is create extra capability inside so we can put additional sensors in there. Yeah. It is a lot of rushing around, yeah. basically because we're all trying to get everything working. Yeah. You can probably see in there, it's absolutely jam-packed full of scientific equipment. These guys are working round the clock to get this plane in the air to bring us back that vital data we need. Millions of pounds of technology, both inside and out, means that unlike normal commercial aircraft, it can detect the ash cloud and, more importantly, find out exactly what it's doing. So basically, the two bits of scientific kit we've got in here yeah. are the uh, SO2 analyzer there, which measures SO2. SO2 so, analyzer. Yep, so it just basically measures the amount of sulfur dioxide okay. in the atmosphere. Right. Just below it, we've got uh, a cloud particle counter. But if particles come in, you shine a laser beam at it and you see how much light is scattered from the particles. This is a cutting so edge, cutting edge technology. aircraft technology. And once, they, once, the, once it, th that machine's measuring that, can you actually look at the data whilst you're in the air? Or, or do yeah, absolutely. So that links up to a laptop or a computer and yeah. we're, we're looking at that and keeping an eye on that in the air. And that's what we're using to monitor, you know, are we getting into the ash cloud or not? Do we need to turn around and get back out again? Are you actually flying into the, the ash cloud? The idea is not that we try and avoid it if possible, for the <laughs> yes. same reasons everyone else wants to avoid it. Yeah. Um, we want to maybe just see where the edge is, quickly dip in and back out again and right. really try and avoid it as much as possible. The plane is finally ready for today's five-hour mission. Professor Stephen Mobbs is one of Britain's leading atmospheric scientists. He's on the ground helping interpret the data the team has been collecting. Let me ask you this, are we over-exaggerating the problem? No, we're not, no, no. When we, we took our aircraft up into the edge of the plume two days ago, and uh, the densities of volcanic ash particles that we saw are way, way beyond anything we could be sure is safe to fly a normal aircraft through. This blue band here, the light blue band, yeah. is the layer of volcanic ash. And you can see it descending yeah. because the particles are heavy, yeah. so they are, they, they are settling out. But why is it so thin? Because, you know, you see, you see it kind of smoking out of the volcano, you get this huge, big, fat almost like a sort of chimney stack effect. So w why is it so thin here? If the wind just came directly from Iceland, yeah. all, all in the same direction all the time, then yeah. you would have one big cloud that would yeah. arrive over the UK. Yeah. But as we know, the wind changes direction with height, with time, the different parts of the world have different wind directions, and this is, this is pulling the plume into little, th ever thinner filaments yeah. all the time. So the ash will go away. We expect that it'll probably go away by the end of the coming week. But if the volcano keeps erupting, it will come back. And uh, the best we can do is to have better prediction systems and better monitoring so we can make the maximum use of the clear airspace we've got. In your experience, have you ever known anything like this? No. No, this is unprecedented. It's a great opportunity to learn some, some new science as well but we'd rather it didn't have such a disruptive effect. Today's mission includes flights over central Scotland and Manchester Airport. The scientists are collecting data for a variety of agencies, including the Met Office and the Civil Aviation Authority. 
So the plane's still up there, and as you can appreciate, we're still in, in the middle of a very fluid situation. There's still a lot of unknowns. But what I have noticed today is this incredible pulling together of agencies and scientists who are all working around the clock to get this vital data so a decision can be made that's going to affect the whole country, not just now, but as long as that volcano is erupting.